Is it fake or is it real? What about AI when we wonder, okay, did that person really write this or is that just chat GPT? What's going on? And what about when a CEO writes a letter and it sounds really good? Did the CEO write that or was that just something that's there? Well, this is what we're going to talk about and some real applications for you as an entrepreneur. Here as we talk at Stark Raving Entrepreneurs about what you can do. Hi, I'm Terry Brock, your guide on this. I want to show you specifically what we need to address. This is a real issue when you're dealing with people and I'm doing it right here in the hotel room. Look at this. Yeah, I'm really in the hotel room. You can see it. So we're getting things packed up and uh, ready to go. Gina and I are here to put things together, but I want to send you a video on something that I read that I thought was really important because right now we're wondering, okay, was this real? Is it a real human being? And I have some dear friends that are authors that have done very, very well. I think of Sam Horn and the books she's written. She made some very good points about making it sure that we're not using just artificial intelligence, but HI, human intelligence. And I think that's a very good point. We want the human touch in there. My friend Diana Boer has written a bazillion books also. I think that's the exact number. <laughs> Diana, if you're watching this, I think that's right. Um, but she talks about the human touch, how we really want to put our soul in there. And I have to agree firmly with that. And yet we also want to use AI. In a way, it's kind of like, you know, years ago, people said, oh, it's not really you if you're using a typewriter and you're not writing writing literally with a pen, a quill pen probably, and papyrus or paper or something, is that being real? Well, I think it is if you use a typewriter. If I use a tool that I often use called Text Editor, or excuse me, Text Expander. Text Expander gives you the ability to type a couple of characters, just a few characters, and it brings in a whole gamut of things. Like for instance, you might have a standard closing that you use, but instead of typing all of that over and over every time, you could consolidate it to three or four short keystrokes, and then it brings it in. That saves a lot of time. Is that fake? I, no, I don't think so. I think it's ability for you to leverage technology. Any more than you use a car to go somewhere, you can get there faster normally than if you're walking. And so we use the technology. And when we look at AI, yes, it helps us to understand where we are and what's going on. Matter of fact, there was an article in the Wall Street Journal that I was reading here on the road, matter of fact, that I thought was particularly good. I wanted to share with you at times. The boss's intelligence might be artificial. Chat GPT and other AI tools can save executives time or reflect poorly on their leadership. And so you gotta be careful on this. And look at what it is. I think the article goes on and says that really well. I like what uh, Colin Borchers, I hope I'm saying his name right, Colin Borchers says on this, the heartfelt email, that clever turn of phrase, those pithy bullet points in that slide deck, did they come from the boss or a bot? And this is something that people are wondering about. Was it really you, you know, or did we do it that way? In other words, those of you that were born a little bit earlier will understand when I say, is it live or is it Memorex? You remember that. If you remember that, then you know where I'm coming from <laughs> on that. Because we wondered, okay, it was live. Live had a different feel. And when something was recorded back then, you could kind of tell. Right now, we're in that era where we can kind of tell it might not be the real person, but it's getting better faster all the time. I mean, this thing is a whirlwind how fast it is. So how do you approach it? What do you do as an entrepreneur who wants to get ahead? You want to be real. Well, I think what you want to do first is acknowledge that we have to be human. We want to put the human presence, the human touch into it, no matter what we do. No, hum no bot, no AI or chat GPT knows the story of what you did last March when you attended that seminar and the instructor was really good and she made some points about this, this, and this. That's something that you have in your own noggin. And you want to make sure that people hear that and that comes in. Use your own words. You, you've seen me and you follow me. I know I make up my own words. Spizzerinkum, delidly wop, and doodly waters, and iggy bockers, and whatever. You know, I come up with this. This is me. Chat GTP is not saying a whole lot about doodly walkers. So, but you can use your own feelings. Make it you. Don't try to be someone else. You be you in an authentic, genuine way. Use tools like Chat GPT, which is wonderful. Perplexity is another one that I use. I've talked to you about this on some of these videos. And you want to use that to get different perspectives, really to get you started. So that when you're looking at, okay, what am I going to write about this week? What video am I going to produce? What podcast could I use today? Well, what you want to do is you want to use the things that are going to be right for you and make sure that it's something that is authentic 
and genuine. The article that I was referring to in the Wall Street Journal talked about that. I think you use it as a starting point. I've said this many times, and I hear some of the best uh, that are out there say the same thing. Matter of fact, we're here for CEX, which is Content Economy Expo, here with uh, some wonderful people. Joe Polizzi and his wife Pam put this together and have done a lot of good things with it. And the really, really smart people who are really, really good with AI and with presenting and connecting as content creators say we use the artificial intelligence to get us started. Use it to clean things up. Kind of like you might use a tool, wonderful little tool called Grammarly. Been around for a while and it goes in, it takes the document that you've put together and it looks at it and goes, um, you should have used this word instead. Or it'd be better to phrase it this way if you'd like. It doesn't force you to, but it says here are suggestions. So tools like that can be good. Using the text to image can be also very good. So you get just that right picture you want and you don't have to worry about it infringing on a copyright. You don't have to worry about a budget and you don't have the money to pay for it, etc. You create it on your own using wonderful tools like uh, Canva with their text to image, using tools like um, uh, Stable Diffusion are out there, Mid Journey. There are many others and we've talked about some of those and we'll be talking about a lot more about those in the future. And for your voice, I'm loving a tool called Eleven Labs. Eleven Labs, that's E-L-E-V-E-N, Labs, gives you the ability to clone your own voice. You can take your voice and put it out there. Now that's got some real wonderful aspects on it. I know there's some dangers, but the good side first, when you think about it, you can take those wonderful articles that you've written in the past that are really good or that you're writing now, and you can let your voice, the cloned voice that is, your voice get in there and use that and say it. So now you've got something you can send out in a podcast. In certain venues, you could use it as an ebook. Not all, you need to check on that before you go forward with it. But there's a lot of opportunities that it opens up. So in sum, we're seeing that AI can really be helpful, but don't go in there and let it do everything. Any more than you would start using a tool for only that tool and having only it do everything. No, that's not a good way to do it. What you want to do is let the human side come in there. I like the way we say it when we talk about video. In a lot of the work that Gina and I have done in video, we say we like to humanize the virtual experience and make sure that that's working. As a matter of fact, something we do at Stark Raving Entrepreneurs, and we'd encourage you to bounce over there and take a look at that to see what's going on. We have a program every Wednesday at 4 p.m. U.S. Eastern Time, 4 p.m. StarkRavingEvent.com is where you want to go to sign up for that. No charge at all, but you hear some of the greatest speakers in the world. We get a chance to tap into them to come in and share information with you, and you learn about the programs we have and how we might be able to help you. And also, we'd really appreciate it if you would like, share, and subscribe to this. The reason is that's sending a message to those wacky algorithms that, hey, you like this, you want the idea of living your life as an entrepreneur, with a live and let live style. Don't hurt others, don't take their stuff. We like to call it the non-aggression principle, NAP. You do what you want to do, but don't aggress against others. And we're going to talk about that more on other videos. Matter of fact, you want to take a look at the video right here that we've got on artificial intelligence that can help you to get ahead. Hey, I'm Terry Brock. Thanks for joining me. Please let us know what you think of this, and we'll look forward to hearing from you.